Hello! We're working hard like a chocobo on this episode 24, March 9th of 2013. I'm Chris. I'm joined here with Mike. Hello. Who's got to run in a little bit, so this is going to be a really short show, and no Grover either. He's off with some family business, so it's going to be really fast and furious over here. But we'll try to offset this a little bit because of how much time I'm going to have freed up by editing. I'm going to see if I can get started on those whole game collection videos, which may be boring, but they seem to be popular on YouTube, and I'm going to try to spiffy them up a little bit to make them a little more interesting than the average just showing cartridges, so we'll see how that goes. But other than that, special thanks to longplays.org for all their help for getting us some wonderful game footage. Go check out their website for ever-increasing long plays from all sorts of gen- genres. Genres? I hate that they changed that word. It was genres for like 20 years. Now everybody calls it genres. <laughs> ah, I don't know. Anyway, and thanks to galaxypugs.com, home of the printed cast forums, and a place to find Unreal Tournament and Minecraft servers to enjoy as well as tournaments. And I finally said that right for the first time in many, many years, many, many broadcasts. There you go. Plus, don't forget Grover's channel on YouTube at PCGOTW, that's PrintyCast Game of the Week, basically, and PrintyCast underscore Grover on Twitch TV, where he streams from 4 to 8 Central Time most of the week. Plus, you can usually catch the PrintyCast podcast live every Saturday afternoon, somewhere between 1 and 6 p.m. CST, or Central Time. But, obviously, he's not here with us, so he can't be streaming us this time. Poor Grover. (laughs) And, yeah, that takes care of that. So what games have you been up to this week? Mostly, I've just been playing Yugi the Destiny, and I played a little bit more Skyward Sword. I haven't really had a whole lot of time because I've been working so hard. <laughs> that sounds... Normally, I would I would giggle at me saying that because it would normally be sarcasm, but this week, it wasn't. <laughs> so those are really the only two games I've been playing. Mine's not that big of a list, either. I've... Uh I kind of got slapped in the back of the head. I've been watching some Minecraft videos with uh, people like the Voxelbox because of the Minecraft show that we did not so long ago. And I've been realizing that my Minecraft city, as huge as it is and as in a lot of ways as impressive as it is because I've done it all myself, there's a lot of things about it that are not very detailed. Now, granted, a lot of this is just me waiting for Minecraft to come out with all their goodies, and then I'll go back through when I do the furnishings. Because like I said on that show, that most of the indoors of these things, there's not really a lot of rooms, there's not a lot of furniture because I keep expecting Minecraft to grow to that point for the vanilla version, so I won't even have to use mods. And uh, I also researched how to make my own mods, and found out that once again, it's reliant on a program to keep updated with Minecraft. Now, considering it is one of the go-to things for mod making, I don't see it going anywhere, but at the same time, that's a risk I really cannot take. So I guess I'm sitting and waiting anyway. Other than that, for some weird reason, I got back into Plants vs. Zombies after all this time. <laughs> I originally planned on doing a LP of it when I was talking about doing stuff over the holiday vacation that we had at the end of mm-hmm. 2012. And so I started up a brand new printy cast version of it. And... I don't know, it's just every time I feel like playing a little something for just a few minutes, and that's usually how my gameplay goes, that's why I don't get a lot of RPGs and big action games in, they just take too long to play lately. But, uh, yeah, that's, squeeze a couple of rounds of that in, I'm good to go. Other than that, the only other things I can think of is a couple of congregate games, like um, Fearless, which is a really interesting kind of bit trip runner sort of game. It, it's more cute than it is technical. And uh, Castle Guard, nah. Was, Castle Guard? It was kind of a... Uh, what was that? Oh, Kingdom Rush. It's sort of like Kingdom Rush, only instead of like a uh, tower defense, it's more the type of game where you set up what troops you want to send out while they're sending them out to you, and it's so basic, so bland. It just didn't keep my attention all the way to the, even the end of it, and I usually play all of these to the end, but that's all my games of this week too, unless I'm forgetting something, and I don't think I am. I haven't even watched a lot of streams. I've watched Grover play SimCity when I could, but I don't know, even that seems to be... Of course, Twitch TV has not been functioning very well for me. Anybody that doesn't have you know the, the people that are partnering with Twitch, I have this weird lag problem that... It's not just lag, so I know it's not just my internet. I mean, it lags my entire computer. It can take up to 1.5, 2 seconds to even open like a folder off to the side as long as the video is running, and there, there's some Something seriously wrong with that, if that's the case. Oh. Know, apparently I'm not the only one, but it's oh, crazy. Well, I forgot to tell you this, but outside of gaming stuff, I've been taking some of my little collectible action figures that I have hmm? and opening them. What? I know! I was like, I'm never going to get rid of them, so... Yeah, but I thought part but, of the idea of having them in the packages is they will always be this pristine. Well, some of them, though, it's like, ah, whatever, because they're, they're not... Okay, I was going to say this here. Jazzwares is horrible. The craftsmanship for their action figures is not that bad, but I bought a couple of play sets, and one of them was the Dr. Wiley's Lab play set. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, six, seven, ten years. I don't even know how long ago it was. 
but I've had it all this time in the box, and I was like, man, that would be so cool if I could open that up and display it. And it turns out it was too big to display, but more than that, half of it is made of cardboard, and it's the half that connects all of the rest of it together. Yeah, it's not surprising. That was a very common tactic in the 80s, and I'm not at all surprised that they still keep that up. Yeah, it's terrible. It just, the pieces don't fit right. There's The instructions don't match the product. <laughs> like, oh. I mean, most of it is pretty common sense. I knew where most of it went, but some of it was like, I don't know. Like, they had these little rods. I was like, where the heck do these rods go? It's not even on the picture. And it's supposed to hold the cardboard up, but the cardboard holds the rods up, so it doesn't really work. <laughs> At the very least, you should have taken a camera and, like, filmed yourself setting it up or something. I probably should have. The big unboxing. Yeah. Because you'll never maybe, have that back. Maybe if I do another one, then I'll... I don't think I have any... Well, actually, I do have a couple of other smaller playsets, but... I didn't know if you had a really good camera, aside from maybe a phone that would do it anyway. Yeah, I have an iPhone. That's about the only camera I have that's worth anything. <laughs> and there's... I've seen plenty of videos that look pretty nice off of an iPhone, so as long as your settings are high enough, yep. probably as good as the thing I've been using. So since this is mostly only going to be a game news show, it may be a little shorter than usual, but nevertheless, here we go to game news! So, a while back, it was kind of the end of the show thing, because I found out about it after we'd already recorded the show, but that Fighting is Magic game made by Main6 that was a kind of parody slash homage to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and it was a fighting game, actually had its demo showed at, like, Evo and Canterlot, which I swear I got that video from that I showed at the time. But, yeah, there was that whole thing where Hasbro made his cease and desist order, so they had to quit production on the game. And that's been kind of a backlash in the community that this is not the first time Hasbro has done this to this series. And as a lot of people know, it is kind of a phenomenon, so there's a gigantic amount of fans out there for it. But, here's what happened afterwards. Uh, I'll go ahead and read right off of what they've got on their thing here. We have some good news and bad news. First, the bad news is we've tried several different ways of talking to Hasbro about getting special permission to continue the game, but it seems that it is officially a dead end and it's time for us to move on. The good news is that the game is not dead. Some even gooder news is that we have a new member of the Main Six family. We would all like you to warmly welcome Lauren Foss to the team. So, for those who don't know, Lauren Foss is pretty much the person who made my Little Pony, what it was. She's the one that redeveloped the characters, redeveloped the entire setup. I don't know how much actual writing she did for the series, but pretty much everything that made the fandom what it is, is largely in her because of what she had to do with the series. And now she is going to be making original characters for the game so they can continue doing the homage sort of thing. It, the look of it probably won't change a whole lot, but you cannot get a better stamp of approval than having basically the creator of the series join on board to do artwork Work and character design for you. She really likes the fandom. Yes. She always has. And I think one of the only reasons she left the company, as I understand it, was that uh, they were taking a lot of her creative freedom away for their marketing purposes. And she didn't like that too much. At least that's how I caught it. I never actually found out, so... Oh. <laughs> But alas, Bioware San Francisco has closed its doors with all of its employees in tow. Formerly EA2D, the group is largely known for its work on browser-style games like Dragon Age Legends and Mirror's Edge 2D. This is not to be confused with THE Bioware. This was a sub-company of EA's that was formerly a different company that was renamed to Bioware San Francisco. But it is no more, and neither is its employees. Well, they're still alive, but y you know... <laughs> Likewise, TimeGate Studios out of Texas laid off some 25 of its staff, and it likewise also said that it was doing so to gear up for transition to the new consoles, which is a common excuse for these lately. I, I still have never heard of this concept before, but uh, TimeGate is basically known for its work on Section 8, Kohan, and most recently part of the large group of developers who had a hand in the Aliens Colonial Marines that has had abated controversy, as we reported last week. Also, Mike Caps of Epic Games has finally completely, totally left after he'd been holding on to an advisory position with the group since December when he stepped down as president. The intention was to keep the role as a means of transitioning the company from all these changes as Cliff Flazinski also left the company last year. And the uh, information only recently came to light as Mike posted on his Facebook page that he'd actually left back in mid-February. Things were not going quite as originally planned. But he's got plenty of things to keep him busy and he wishes his former comrades, quote, all the best in their future projects, end quote. I wonder how much of the wish you all the best is actually that, because it seems to be a pretty common statement that people make when they leave a company. But I think this was his own doing. I think he's the one that officially stepped down from the company himself on his own interests. So, mm. now why he's not same with the advisory position, I don't know. And big news for a lot of people in this particular fandom, the Thief series will be making a comeback. While rumored since 2009, leaked pictures and now a Game 
Informer, uh, what do you call him? Article. <laughs> you don't know. Broke pretty much uh, broke the much more real and official news just recently. It's set for release in 2014 for the PC and very likely for the upcoming new consoles, whatever they're officially called, PS4 and Xbox 720 at the moment. And Activision is also prepping its XBLA PSN slash PC. Uh, there's some more slashes in there. PC trio of Team and T games. That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, based on the new Nickelodeon animated series. Uh, the first Out of the Shadows is a third-person action brawler that is being developed by Redfly Studio. Hmm. And next, Humble Bundle returns with the Android 5 selection that currently holds Solar 2, Night Sky HD, Dynamite Jack, and Beat Hazard Ultra. Plus, if you beat the average, you get Super Hexagon and Dungeon Defenders with all its DLC. And I'm going to check real quick here to make sure that they haven't added anything else, because they tend to do that. Do, 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 do. Nope, nothing yet. It was worth a short, yes. And thanks to Skullgirls having a successful go with the Indie Go Go campaign, uh, players will get the Squiggly character, the one that they were going to be adding pretty soon, her story mode, and a brand new stage, all as free DLC this summer. And a strange DLC in the form of God of War Ascension, which comes out very, very soon. Matter of fact, I think that's next week too, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, edit post print. Um, where if you pre order at GameStop, you get the 300s version of the Spartan Leonidas for all your This is Sparta meme pleasures. <laughs> I kid you not. Matter of fact, the trailer will be running right here. It even shows the infamous pit as a arena. It almost looks like it's some sort of multiplayer mode. I'm not sure if there is one in that, but eh, I don't know. Hey, you said this is God of War. Did I mishear God that? War. God of War is wow. coming out for the PS3 next week. That's the one that comes with the uh, Beyond Two Souls demo, I think. It is? I don't remember which demo it was. And so, lawyers for Kurt Schilling, former Boston Red Sox player and uh, founder of the Demise 38 Studios, that umbrella company for the umbrella company <laughs> for the <laughs> likes of Kingdom of Amalur, that was a huge success last year. Anyway, uh, the lawyers asked the judge to dismiss the case against him and others involved with the studio as Rhode Island Economic Development Corp is suing, claiming they had frauded the company, including racketeering and conspiracy, after the 2010 $75 million loan that was a part of the teal, uh, part of the deal, part of the deal to move the studio from Massachusetts to Rhode Island, which is largely what all of this hubbub was about. Despite some successes, you may remember that the studio failed to stay afloat and was unable to pay the now $100 million, when you include the interest, loan that it had, and thus it filed for bankruptcy last summer and had all of its assets auctioned off by last fall. Honestly, I don't see this going through, so I think he's going to get dragged to court anyway. But ironically, I, at the same time, I don't see this as a success coming to the RIEDC either. It, it just seems like your standard politics and your tax dollars at work there. It's just going to go to court and kind of stir. I don't think there's anything left. The guy doesn't have any money anymore. Neither does any of his partners. So, I don't know. You can't really sue for funds when there's no funds. <laughs> I mean, what else are they going to do? Is jail time? I mean, I know that <laughs> happens, but that's hardly. Uh, but I mean, that's hardly any good that would do because then we'll be paying the prison to keep him up. He might as well be out and doing something. This is not like it was a criminal act here. He just made some bad decisions. It happens. But but Skyrim launched a big update as uh, 1.9 comes out that will add a legendary difficulty and raise the game's level cap by allowing players with skills at 100 to bump them into a legendary stat, basically kind of re-rolling them, but keeping the bonuses as I understand it. But they will upgrade this, uh, the skills level to, or downgrade rather, to level 15, so you can allow to bump back up to level 100 as a legendary status. Plus it removes the perks so you can begin the leveling there again. Uh, I don't know if I said any of that right, but it's all of that, plus some bug fixes. And of course that's free. And speaking of more free updates, Minecraft Snapshot 13W10A came out, and more recently 13W10B. They're both mostly bug fixes, but with Minecraft 1.5 on the very near horizon, it's good to get all this fixed and ready to boogie before it gets to that point, because the last thing we need is one of those official launches and bugs everywhere. In fact, don't be surprised if 1.5 arrives as early as this next week, or this week, actually. And it's also a buzz that uh, when the Xbox exclusivity deal is over, Mojang just might be bringing the game to PSN next. And that's not a small thing because it is often one of the top three at any given moment most played games on the XBLA online. It actually beat Call of Duty out uh, in one month or one week after. I don't remember when it was, but yes. And the full list of BAFTA 2013 Game Award winners came out. Uh, that's the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. Uh, Journey picked up five awards, including Best Original Music and Audio Achievement, while Dishonored took home the Best Game of the Year. Journey's such a good game. 
So the best game was to Dishonored. The Fellowship Award went to Gabe Newell of Valve. The best action game went to Far Cry 3. Most innovation went to Unfinished Swan, which I don't think is out yet. I'm kind of surprised it got on the awards list. But Artistic Achievement went to Journey. Best Mobile and Handheld went to The Walking Dead. Best Audio Achievement went to Journey. Best Original Music went to Journey. Best Online Browser Video Game went to Song Pop. The game to watch is called Starcrossed. Not familiar with that one. The best online multiplayer game was Journey. The best British game was The Room, which I hope is <laughs> not the one <laughs> off of What's-His-Name's movie. Surely not, right? Mm. Can't think of his name. I don't know. Best uh, performer, Danny Wallace, is the narrator, and uh, Thomas was alone. Best debut game was The Unfinished Swan, which makes me think, okay, it must be out after all, and I just didn't know that. Best spit- spitness, yeah. Best sports and fitness game was New Star Soccer. Best family game was Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Best story came out of The Walking Dead. Best strategy game was XCOM Enemy Unknown. And lastly, best game design was for Journey. Can't say there's too many surprises there, with the exception of the stuff I'm not familiar with. Yeah. But what absolutely dominated in most of this week's news and games, and I was kind of hoping Grover would be here for this, was EA Maxis's launch of SimCity. Uh, not all was unexpected between the shortfall with the betas, as Grover discovered, and the mass amounts of goofiness that was going on surrounding the servers and the release dates long before it ever happened. But SimCity has had the less than stellar launch this week, calling reminders to last year's big online fumblings by Blizzard with Diablo 3. Matter of fact, they're very similar. Uh, Maxis has vowed to do what they can, do everything they can to fix the issue, and so is EA despite them being largely to blame for this debacle, not being prepared for what ended up being one of the more successful games of the year so far. More servers are being added, temporary m- removal of non-critical systems like achievements and leaderboards and region filters and even the cheetah speed option to help the stability of the servers are uh, being used, and other smaller fixes throughout. But the fallout has been done and poor reviews are flooding in on the basis of the server troubles alone, which is a really sad way to look at a game, but when Maxis made the decision to put this game online is what the way they did. It's, it's, that's going to happen. That's part of your game at that point. Uh, Amazon at one point even stopped the sales of its digital copies of the game, but have reinstated that within about 24 hours. As far as I know, they're still up. EA is refusing refunds on downloaded versions as part of its origin policy. And yes, there has been plenty of people asking for that. And while the UK's launch on Friday was supposed to go well, and it started off stable enough to uh, EA's smiles, that quickly turned out to be short-lived as another set of problems ended up hitting the European servers every bit the mess that the North American one was. And um, Maxis is doing some damage control as Maxis's general manager, Lucy Bradshaw, just today, that is Saturday 9th, Saturday 9th, yeah, I think I said that right, I'm confused, that anyone that activated a copy of SimCity before March 18th will get a free EA title. Nothing further on what games they're giving away or when they're going to be giving this gesture out. But uh, all in all, score another faux pas in the name of always online DRM. Not that it's completely DRM's fault here, but we've learned nothing from Spore and Diablo 3, apparently, because here's SimCity to add to that list, and there's plenty more where those came from. And even though there's a vast amount of these complaining players that have little right to complain about the online component when it was well documented that it existed, and everybody knew it was going to do something like that, they got what was being offered knowing full well what it meant. I understand the pain involved of it, but there comes a point that the gamer also has to take responsibility for knowing something was going to happen and biting anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, though, I guess there was a, a press release saying, hey, if you feel that we've let you down too much, then we will give you a refund, and they're refusing this refund. Hmm. Maybe if it was on a uh, like a disc version of it, that may be why it's different than the Origin downloadable story. Hmm. But that's interesting all the same. And ironically, EA is also up in arms over a rumor that came out of an article on videogamer.com that they claimed there would be no more Dead Space. The article came out of a trusted source that they wanted to keep anonymous, and so far still have, who handed over some apparent credible proof that Dead Space 3's poor performance and sales caused them to axe DS4 early. And despite how rumors like this happen all the time, EA's reactions is more akin to political backlash rhetoric than a video game company. It, this is r- very rare. Um, so whether it was true or not, it should be noted that some of the last month's layoffs that we told you about did indeed come out of Dead Space's offices in Visceral, Montreal. Whether that's related to it or not, I have no idea. And that leaves us to our game releases. I know, I keep saying, well, never do those game release things again because they keep giving me improper dates, but I keep doing it every week anyway. So... <laughs> 
So we got some big stuff coming out. We got Sniper Ghost Warrior 2, but I know that's not what everybody wants to hear me talk about. We got Dark Starkers Resurrection for XBLA and PSN, and I know that's not what everybody wants me to talk about. It's these other two. God of War Ascension, that we just mentioned for the PS3, and StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm for the PC and the Mac, which is the upgrade expansion thingamajig. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, those are pretty big. I don't think God of War Ascension is making as much buzz as God of War 3 did, because it was the first one for the PS3. StarCraft 2, on the other hand, you've got a lot of people that are kind of, eh, StarCraft, I-, I liked it, but it wasn't that big of a deal to me. And then you had the hardcore people that are going to go absolutely nuts for this. I don't have as negative of an opinion as I've seen a lot of people have towards Blizzard in general lately. I did cancel my World of Warcraft count, as you know, because I don't like the way they were doing that game. It's too, too much busy work now, it's not enough time for me to get everything done and then go back and have fun on other characters. But a lot of people didn't like the story for StarCraft 2, and that seems to be a common problem that people are citing with Blizzard games in general, but aside from Diablo 3's story that I didn't care for, I didn't have a problem with StarCraft 2's. So... I'm actually looking forward to Heart of the Swarm. I like StarCraft. Um, I'm not a, a very good RTS player, so I don't play multiplayer. It's super competitive. Yeah, it's it's crazy the kinds of things that people come up with to do that you just mm-hmm. you don't think about it. You get blown up in one move. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. So I, I don't play it competitively. I only play it the single player mission. And if I think it's good enough, I'll go back and play it on the harder difficulties. And I did that with Wings of Liberty. So I'm looking forward to Heart of the Swarm. And since you mentioned the Blizzard and storytelling, and they're not really meshing well with people these days, I guess I should mention a little known story that I didn't actually write down. A smaller story, rather. And that was Sam Raimi, the guy that's behind Evil Dead and the Spider-Man movies, actually opened his mouth about what happened of why he's no longer on the World of Warcraft project. And that's because he wanted to do something more with the story than what they had because what they had is impossible to make a movie with. So him and his partner went to work and came up with a, an original story to fit well inside the, the World of Warcraft universe that they thought that the fans would like, but moviegoers could get into. With, um, but they worked on this thing for like six, three to six months I think it was. I don't have my notes here on this so I'm going by memory so forgive me if I'm wrong here. But they worked on this for months, and Blizzard was kind of, eh, we'll, we'll look at it, we'll look at it, there's some changes, we can do something with it. And at the end of this period, they just outright said they didn't like it. If they would have said that in the first place, <laughs> it would have saved a lot of time. And, but uh, yeah, the, the guy they've got now, who's the guy that was behind the movie uh, Source Code, I think he could do a good job for, for as far as intricate storytelling is concerned, but considering there's no way to look at World of Warcraft and not see it as some big epic, I don't know. This may be the wrong person for the job in that respect, but I'm just battling, mostly. I've stopped bothering to keep up with what they're doing with the Warcraft movie, because they keep changing things. <laughs> Is Raimi even still supposed to be directing it? No, he has nothing to do with that anymore. Yeah. It'll get made. It may be a long time down the road. I mean, it took decades before Spider-Man and G.I. Joe got made, and they got made, finally. Better or worse, they got made. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's all we've got for this week. Um, I'll try to see what I can get you guys for stuff to do, and Burger will still be streaming. Um, all right, next week, I think I'll go ahead and say this. The plan is, usually I try not to do this in case things get switched around a little bit, and nobody's getting their hopes up for something, but we're going to be doing a big, long thing on The Sims. No, we're not just talking The Sims. We're talking pretty much Will Wright's entire roster and a lot of the stuff that Maxis has done since the very beginning. And we'll be going through all The Sim Cities, all The Sims, all The Spinoffs, like uh, Sim Farm, Sim Ant, Sim Town, Sim Tower, Sim 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 Sim. So join us next week for that. And uh, I'm Chris. I'm Mike. And we'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye.